In this presentation, we shall be discussing about the working principle, types, components of the and their function in pillar types when converture performance curve efficiency calculation of centrifugal pump. Pump is used to increase the pressure or head of a fluid or mixture of a fluid and moving the fluid from suction to the discharge by imparting the energy from external source. Pump can be classified as displacement pump and centrifugal pump. <clears throat> a displacement pump, uh, there are two types. One type is called reciprocating and other type is called centrifugal. <clears throat> there are another type. In centrifugal type, we have got radial flow and axial flow and in <clears throat> displacement type, we have got reciprocative pump and rotary pump. <clears throat> Centrifugal pump work on the principle of conservation of the kinetic energy of the flowing fluid the fluid and it converts velocity into pressure into a static pressure as described by the Bernoulli's principle. The rotation of the pump impeller accelerates the fluid as it passes from the impeller eye that is center of the impeller and outward through the impeller vents to the periphery. As the fluid exits the impeller, a portion of the fluid momentum is then converted to a static pressure. That is, the velocity is converted into a static pressure. Typically, the volute shape of the pump casing or the diffuser fan assist in energy conservation and converts velocity into head by increasing the area. The energy conservation results in an increased pressure on the downstream side of the pump. Centrifugal pump <coughs> generation of centrifugal force. The process fluid enters the suction nozzle and then into the eye <coughs> or center of the revolving in impeller. When the impeller rotates, it spins the liquid sitting in the cavities between the vent outward and provides centrifugal acceleration. As liquid leaves eye of the impeller, a low pressure area is <coughs> created causing more fluid to flow in towards the inlet of the impeller. Because the impeller blades are curved, the fluid is pushed in a tangential and radial direction by the centrifugal force. <coughs> Here, on the left hand side, we can see <coughs> the internal of a pump. Uh, it is a single stage volute casing pump. This is the volute of the casing. This is the impeller. These are impeller when, when the rotate this impeller rotates is create a velocity and as its velocity goes towards the outlet or discharge side, the area increases. As a result, the velocity, the velocity is converted into head or pressure. On bottom left hand side, you can see this is, this is the impeller eye. Liquid enters from here. Liquid comes out from the here. It passes through the fluid and go to the discharge. <clears throat> Here, on top right, you can see the liquid is entering into the pump and then going out. <clears throat> At the bottom, you can see this is a diffuser type of pump. This is the impeller which is rotating. This is the impeller which is rotating, creating the vessel velocity and the, there is an increased area in the diffuser which converts the velocity into the pressure and then the liquid goes out. This type is used for multi-pressure, <clears throat> multi-stages pump whereas volute type pump is used for single stage pump. Here we can see a single stage pump on the left hand side. 
if we see liquid enters from here this is the pump impeller it passes through the pump impeller and then goes out <coughs> from here this is the this is the shaft of the pump here is the gland sealing done to avoid the liquid leaking through the shaft and a sealed flush liquid enters from here then these are this is the there is one radial bearing here there is one radial and thrust bearing here <clears throat> on right hand side we can see the other components like this is the impeller i this is impeller <clears throat> this is the casing wear ring this is the impeller here we can see there is a shaft sleeve here to <clears throat> put the gland packing or the mechanical seal this is the casing of the pump this is the shaft packing is put in the stuffing box and this is the alternate nozzle of the pump <clears throat> previous slide we have seen the over type of pump in this slide we are able to see the between bearing pump between pump means that the shaft has got bearing on both the sides and the impeller is in between the bearings so this 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 pump is a double entry pump double suction pump there are two liquid enters from here as well as from here and goes out from here this is the bearing portion gland portion bearing portion gland portion and bearing portion on right hand side we can see other components <coughs> also this is the main impeller liquid enters from here and here and goes out discharge is from here this is the sleep <clears throat> this is the sleep this is the casing this is the sealing pipe from where the liquid goes for the gland sealing and this is the shaft and the packings gland packings are shown here <clears throat> in this drawing all the minor major and minor components of a pump between bearing pump has been shown and <clears throat> you can study it with the laser <clears throat> i am not explaining it due to lack of time <clears throat> now <clears throat> for multi stage pump what we see here is a ring type multi stage pump in multi stage pumps <clears throat> there are so many impellers arranged in series <clears throat> on the same shaft and the flow progresses from one impeller to other to the then to the next to the next to the next like that and more or less same amount of pressure is increased in this stage <clears throat> here we can see on the top liquid enters from here and then passes through the impeller eye comes out from the tip of the impeller then passes through the diffuser and then again enters the eye of the next stage impeller from here it goes out and it progressively <coughs> go moving or moves on like that in ring section pump there are pumps both casing and impeller are assembled in together in sections and then they are tied by a <coughs> rod you can see all this there this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 like like that there are impellers and casing arranged together and then they are tightened together with this tie rod <coughs> so in liquid enters from here goes out from here <clears throat> you can see on the bottom a liquid enters here and then again it is passing through different stages and the diffuser this is the impeller this is the main body <clears throat> this is here you can see this is the diffuser liquid comes out from the here here is the balance disc which balances the thrust liquid goes out from here <clears throat> for very high pressure pumps it was absorbed that sometimes the liquid leaks from the joints of this joints of the ring pumps 
so and causing a lot of accidents to the people injury to the people so for very high pressure pumps the ring section pump is first assembled aisle uh, outside and then it is pushed after assembling it is pushed inside this barrel <clears throat> so if there is any leakage from these joints this leakage will be content inside the barrel and there is a drain provided if there is any leakage liquid will come out from the drain and then we come to know and then the repairs can be taken <clears throat> these pumps are used for very very high pressures and so many times in atomic power stations also <clears throat> so here we can see the various components of a barrel pump this is this is the shaft the, and then bearings bear the, here are the bearings this is the bearing here this is the bearing here there is a, a stuffing box where the mechanical seal is installed here as well as on the right side also there are o rings here between each and every casing there are <coughs> o, o rings here and <coughs> everything is put inside the casing there <coughs> there is wear ring at the inlet there is a wear ring at the inlet and you can see this is the first stage of the impeller then this is the last stage of the impeller <clears throat> and a optional cooler can be provided for cooling the while inside the bearing <clears throat> centrifugal pump multi all multi stage pumps have got closed impeller so liquid enters from here in this is the impeller i and goes out from the tip of the wedge or in this drawing liquid enters from here and goes out from the tip of the blade <clears throat> this is a semi open impeller which is used mostly for shroud uses so this impeller is covered on only one side open on the other side liquid enters from here and it is pushed back it is mainly used for slurry on the top right we are able to see a fully open impeller with the casing a fully open impeller is used basically for very high viscous liquids up to the up to 90% solid <clears throat> here we are able to see the two types of vertical pumps the pump in the on left hand side this is the pump pump is here and then the discharge goes out through this pipe and it is supported here <clears throat> this is the strainer of the pump on middle <clears throat> we see that this is the pump is housed here pump is housed here and liquid enters from here liquid enters from here and then goes out if we see on the right hand side liquid enters from here this is the impeller i liquid enters here comes from out here and through this opening the liquid goes out and comes out from this flange and this is the shaft the through which the shaft is coming out here and the motor is connected here on the top <clears throat> here we can see the diff different nomenclatures for a vertical pump this is the grade where the pump is mounted this is called a static level this is the pumping level this is the static the pump will start here the pump will start this is the submerged minimum this much liquid is required this is the total <coughs> pump length uh, this is the discharge head and then this is the pump specified pump head <coughs> now we will talk about the npsh or net positive suction head all pump required a certain npsh to permit the liquid to follow into the pump casing this is net 
head available at the pump impeller depending on type and number of impeller vents. A pump with lower NPSH at capacity point will deliver less head at the capacity point and will start cavitating. What is cavitation? Cavitation is caused by expensive losses of NPSH resulting in formation of the vapor bubbles in the liquid which will quickly collapse in high pressure region as the vapor will condense releasing a very high energy that attacks the impeller when or slough causing the pitting in the impeller. <clears throat> To avoid the cavitation, the NPSH should be more than the vapor pressure of the liquid. NPSH can be improved by installing inducer at the impeller inlet. NPSH is required in reciprocating pump to push open the suction valve and to overcome friction losses and acceleration head as, exp as expressed in pressure unit. In it is required in rotary pumps to push the pump material into the cavities created by the pumping elements and expressed as head. <clears throat> in this slide, we are able to see the performance curve of a centrifugal pump. The horizontal line shows the flow, Q, the flow. <clears throat> this curve is showing the efficiency of the pump. We, we, we can see that as the flow increases, the efficiency goes on increasing till the best efficiency point and then it starts drinking. <clears throat> this line shows power input to the pump. As the flow increases, the power taken by the pump goes on increasing. <clears throat> This, this curve shows the head of the pump. As the flow goes on increasing, the pressure starts continuously dropping. The bottom curve shows the net positive head required for the pump. And we, we see that as, as the pump flow increases, the NPSH requirement of the pump goes up. <clears throat> when pump reaches at a point where the flow will not increase even we reduce the pressure or head of the pump to the minimum and this is called the cutoff point of the pump. This happens because of the various friction losses inside the pump and pump cannot give any at any lowest pressure with more than certain amount of discharge. <clears throat> Centrifugal pump have got three types of the curve, uh, vent curvatures. The left one is shown as the forward curve. You can see this is the, it is rotating clockwise and the vents are curved in the forward. In the middle, the vent is rotating clockwise, but the curves vent is curved backward. And in the right hand side drawing, the curves are totally straight. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if we see in a nutshell the performance curve of a radial flow pump, then this is actually the percentage of the design flow. The <clears throat> as, as the flow increases, as the flow increases, then what happens is the when the flow is increasing, the head or the pressure starts uh, dropping. <clears throat> the power taken by the pump goes on <coughs> increasing. The power taken by the pump goes on increasing. The efficiency of the pump will go and increase up to the 100% flow that is the best efficiency and after that the efficiency will start dropping very sharply. <clears throat> now in this slide we have compared the characteristics curve of forward curve straight and radial. So in a forward curve blade we will see that the head is 
more not fluctuating months where we are increasing the flow. Whereas in backward curve, when we increase the flow, the head drops very sharply. So actually the pump is normally designed that full capacity at a low pressure and a straight curve is in between the two for the straight radial blade. <clears throat> There are another type of the which we call axial flow pump. In axial flow pump, the <clears throat> flow is taking in direction of the shaft of the pump or axial direction and as shown here with the arrow. Or here you can see this is a, this is one impeller when then this is diffuser, impeller when diffuser like that, and the flow is moving like this. <clears throat> it so <clears throat> if we see a, the capacities of these pumps these pumps are designed for a very high flow and very very pressure capacities the pumps available today in the market are up to 35000 meter cube per hour but the head is only 9 meters and there are certain pump design where a soft solid up to 9 inch can pass through the pump. If we see the curve, performance curve of the axial flow pump at zero discharge, this is the flow, this is the flow. At zero discharge, the pump takes more almost 300 times of the normal power when pump is discharging nothing it is takes almost 300 percent <throat> power and as we go on increasing the flow as we go on increasing the flow the you see <clears throat> the head is maximum the power is maximum at zero zero flow as we go on increasing the flow the head starts the head starts dropping and the power also starts <coughs> dropping. Now, if we talk about the pump efficiency, so in the pump efficiency equation, we have used Q as a flow meter measured in meter cube per hour at best efficiency point of the pump. TDH is the total discharge head of the pump, which is this discharge head minus suction head for positive suction pumps and suction head plus discharge head for negative suction pumps. And then we calculate water kilowatt of the pump and which is equal to density of the liquid into the flow into TG divided by 367. And the pump efficiency will be equal to water kilowatt divided by kilowatt. Density is in kg per decameter cube and it is 1 for water at 4 degree centigrade. So, thank you very much. I have, I am uploading two other videos also. So, part 1 considers centrifugal pump, part 2 rotary pump and part 3 reciprocating pump. Thank you very much.